Father God, I sit over there and I'm thinking about a text I got this morning that reminds us how special something handmade is. When someone takes the time to hand make something custom made special for us, how, how precious it is. God, with that said, you have said in your word that this is the day that you have handmade. And we should rejoice and be glad in it. You even say that you hand make and you knit us together. In our mother's womb. So Lord, when I look around this room today, I see your handiwork. When I look at this day, I see your handiwork. Lord, your handiwork is all over our life. Your gift, your gift to us is this day. Your gifts to us are the people in our lives, Lord. Thank you. I don't want to go another day not thankful for your day. I don't want to go another minute not celebrate the people that you've put in my life. So, Lord, thank you for reminding us of the truth of your word. God, I thank you for this time of praise that we can reflect on just how good a God you are. And now I thank you that we can open up your spoken, written word. And even draw more closer to you as we see your heart and your way and your will. So, Jesus, I thank you that you are the way maker. You're the one that works all things together for good. So I pray right now that you would give us ears to hear what you have to say to us individually in our season today. Lord, let us take a biscuit and sop it up. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Well, my clock up here says 1023. We got plenty of time. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Somebody said, please change that. If you have your Bible, let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, I'm so glad and thankful you came to church today on a cool day. Man, it felt good out there. Some of you say, no, nah. no. Nah. I'm so thankful for our praise team, y'all. They're such a blessing. The Lord has truly blessed us. So we've been in this series Staying close with God, and, and, and this is our third week, and man, I'm, a, I'm just excited about it, because, you know, what, what better place would you want to be than close to him, right? Amen. You know, when you talk about salvation and being saved, you know, like, what, what, what do you really mean? What are we talking about? And it's like, I know I've been saying this the last few weeks, but you think of it, you're like... Hey, I'm saved. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means we've, we're saved from sin. We've been saved from sin. And a lot of people are like, that's where we stop and we say, hallelujah. God, thank you for pulling me out of my sin. Yeah, I still struggle, but, but for the most part, I have victory over it. Lord, thank you for being my Savior over my sin. Right? Saved from my sin. From our sin. But, you know, when you've been saved from something, 
it doesn't stop right there. There's a saved to as well, right? You, we, so we've been saved from what? Sin, and now we've been saved to, and y'all know this by now. What have we been saved to, church? A relationship. With who? With Jesus, with God himself, right? And, and I just, I never want to take that for granted. And I was thinking, you know, like, you know, if, if, you've, if you're in here today and you've been adopted, you know how important it is to be saved from a bad situation, but then saved to a relationship of some parents or guardians that truly love you. And that's what's happened. Jesus has taken us and saved us from the old devil. He, he wasn't a very good parent. I mean, he would let you do what you want to do, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's not a good parent. And then we're saved to a relationship with Jesus. You know, uh, Revelation 3.20 is one of my favorite scriptures, and Jesus is talking about how he stands at our door and he's knocking. You know, you can stand at somebody's door, but you ain't got to knock, right? But if you knock, the moment you hear, that, that person wants something, right, right? I mean, if somebody's knocking on you do your door, that person wants something. Well, I'm here to tell you, and the Scripture tells us that Jesus has knocked on, is knocking at our door. Okay? That means he wants something. And if you read the Scripture, he says, I stand at the door and I knock. He says, if you'll hear me, he says, I'll come in with you. And he says, I'll eat with you. I'll dine with you. I'll sit at the table with you. And he, he says, I just want, what do you do when you go, when, you ever ask somebody to go to lunch? What, are you, what does that mean, well, let's go to lunch? Are we just going to sit there and watch each other get stuff in our teeth? No. What are we going to do? We're going to sit there and we're going we're gonna to talk. We're gonna, our relationship's going to get stronger because we're visiting and we're spending time together, right? That is what relationship is all about. In church, it's the same thing with Jesus. So when our Creator knocks at our door, can you imagine that the uh, Creator God that we think he's so far away, but he's not. He's actually knocking on our door because he wants a relationship with us. So i got to ask you that question this morning. Have you, did, have you opened up that door today? Did you, did you say yes to Jesus when he knocked on your door? Like, or or you, like, you, you looked at the window a couple of times. You're like, ah, it's Jesus. Like, man, man. That means I'm going to have to give up this and I'm going to have to give up that. I ain't, no, Jesus, I ain't answering is anybody like, I did that, I did that, I was guilty of that, I was like, oh Lord, I, you know, I used to be in church services and I would feel the call and Jesus calling my name, calling me out of my sin and my shame and I'm just hanging on to the back of the chair like, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not doing anything, right? How many times have we said no? But when you finally say yes, that means we begin to walk in a relationship with him. So let me ask you this, and I don't know how long ago he knocked on your door and you said yes, but let me ask you, it may have been 20 years ago, it may have been 10 years ago, it may have been six months ago. Let me ask you this, how's that relationship doing? How's that relationship between you and Jesus? Is it better than ever? Or do y'all rarely talk? Because you know we got some friends like that, right? It's like, man, we used to be tight, man, we used to be tight, but... We really don't talk that much anymore. That relationship is not as good as it once was. So how about us and Jesus? It's just something to think about, right? That's what this series is all about. We have a relationship with Jesus, but, but how good is that relationship? Because, man, you do realize he wants you right up next to him. He wants you right up next to him. Not, not way over there. You remember back in the day before seatbelts? And, 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 and they'd be driving a truck, and you, Miss Thang would be right up against him, you know. And you're like, man, things are going good. But if she was over there against the door, things weren't so good. And the Lord don't want us over there against the door on the other side looking out the window like this. No, up next to him just gazing in his eyes. So First John, that's what this book is all about. The more I read it, the more I get into it. I don't know if since we've been in it, if you've been reading any, but it, it, it's, it's a book of intimacy is what it is. And it's helping us to stay close to Jesus, helping us to enjoy the relationship. Because y'all know what it means. You know, you've seen marriages that they're legally married, but they're miserable, right? We don't want that with the Lord. We don't want to be saved from our sin, but the relationship, you know, not good. 
right? So simply, we've just been going verse by verse in this book, and we've made it all the way to chapter 2, verse 3. So we're just going to pick up where we left off. If you've not been here, you've missed any of this, you can go back on the website, on the, on the YouTubes, or whatever you want to do, and, and our messages are right there. So I encourage you to go check them out. So here we go. Let's go verse 3. That's where we're at. So let's just jump in, and we'll just explain it as we go. So John is saying, now by this, by this, we know. Somebody say, we know. By this we know that we know him. See the capital H, meaning Jesus. If, here's the contingency plan, we what? Keep his commands. Okay, listen to that very carefully. We, we know that we know Jesus because we've been keeping his commands. Okay? So, all right, there's something we got to jump into right off the bat. If you're in here today and you want to start knowing Jesus, you want to either you want to better your relationship or you want to start with, with a relationship with Jesus, the first thing we need to do is go check out his commands. Go check out his commandments because that means that we're wanting to know his heart and his will. See, his heart and his will is in his word, right? So if you want to write a note right there, the, to me, the best thing when you're beginning a, a relationship with Jesus, I would say if you want to get close and intimate, I'd say intimate is, is, is tied to obedience. It's a great note to write down that our intimacy, my closeness with Jesus means I need to be obedient. And church, that's where a lot of us bail because we want to do our own thing, right? Okay, so right, here we go. Intimacy is tied to obedience. Why? Again, why? 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 Why obedience? Because, listen, he wants us to begin to know his heart. Because, man, once you start seeing the heart of God and you see how much he loves you, oh, man, it's priceless. Would you agree? So I would say, well, the Lord is not really going to be close to somebody that don't want to be close to him. Right? They, I, they, okay, I, he, he's like, I want somebody who's interested in, in my will and my way. In church, let me tell you something. Our will and our way, that's a, that's a train wreck. So I would think now, by now, maybe it's time to try his will and way. Amen? So an example would be this. Okay, when he called your name, back when he called your name, did you respond? See, if there's an action of response... That means the intimacy can begin. But if there's no response, then there's no intimacy. That's why he says we know him by our obedience to his commands. That's how we get to know the Lord. That's how we get close to him. Okay? Now, let's jump into this we know. Okay? That's something that uh, <laughs> we've got two twin boys, 10 years old, right? And... This is what they say all the time. We know. Cody, am I telling a lie? We know. Hey, you need to get your clothes on. We about to leave. We know. <laughs> you didn't know we was leaving. <laughs> you know, like, man, you're the all-knowing ones. Like, we, we need to bow down to you. You know, we, we can say anything. Like, hey, you know, uh, I went fishing today, and we, we caught 10 or 11. Oh, we know. Really? Were you there? I said, let me do a power squared and cornbread around. We know. Right? <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, it's just amazing how they, how they all know everything. Just anyway. So when you take that, okay, in the scripture and you say, we know. Okay, there, there had to be something that happened in the past, right, that we've grasped a hold of. And now we know it. It makes sense. Now let me get uh, gr grammatic on you here. Now this, I'm not one to be pa pattern yourself over with grammar for sure, right? So, so yeah. But I'm gonna explain it to you because I, I saw it, I seen it. Which one y'all think's right? Seat. I seen it. We know. <laughs> 
is a, is a, let me say this right, a present perfect tense. I want you to see that. Okay, we know, I'm taking you somewhere with this, is a present perfect tense. Because when you say we know, that means right now I know. And then when you know versus you don't know, okay, that's perfect. All right? Present perfect tense. You didn't say like, hey, I, I used to know or I might know or I'm going to know. No, you say we know. Present perfect tense. Okay? So again, that means something in the past, Jesus knocked on our door. He called our name, has made a ripple effect. Listen, don't, 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 don't miss this. It's still rippling 20 years later, 30 years later, six months later. And I can say today that I know Jesus. Okay? That means the ripple effect, even how far it was back then, is still making a difference in my life today. That is present perfect tense. That's, that's, that is awesome right there. Jesus knocked on my door. I experienced him. I have a relationship with him. I'm experiencing him right now. He's rubbing off on me. So even though he knocked on your door 10 years ago, are you still in a pattern of, of obedience? Are you still in a pattern of pursuit today? That's the question. Today, today, that is present perfect tense. Listen, we all that's right there where we all need to be. We don't need that ripple effect to go away. We don't need that passion. Listen, it should be getting stronger and stronger as we, as we go. Listen, the good news shouldn't become old news ever. Amen? Now, let me, let, let's get a little heavy right quick. Obedience. We don't like to hear that word. Who wants to hear obedience? Right? But listen... It says we know him because we keep, obey his word and commandments. Okay? So that makes obedience very, very important. He even said back in the day when people were doing sacrifices and stuff, he would say, I would rather have your obedience than your sacrifice. Okay? So obedience is very important. So let's talk about obedience for a minute. We got to get this. Obedience... Is actually true worship. Obedience is true worship. Now, a lot of people, we would say, hey, we came in this morning. Praise team, man, was awesome. They led us into worship or they led worship. Yeah, uh, you would hope that your praise, you're praising God, you're thanking Him would turn into worship. But praise is not necessarily worship. Okay. To understand true worship, and I'm going to say that obedience is definitely part of worship. I know we're taking you a little deeper this morning, but it's good. It's going to be good for you. Okay? It's like getting some antibiotics rather than aspirin. <laughs> okay? Romans 12.1 says this. It, it, Paul is crying out. He's saying, guys, I encourage you. I, I beseech you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God. Listen to what he says. He said that we would present our bodies, this is our earth suit, our, our bodies as a what? Living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is our reasonable act of service, a.k.a. worship. If you write in your Bible, I'd write that there, worship. This is, what is your reasonable response to, to God when he's doing stuff in your life? Or, or just knowing God and who he is, our reasonable response right there is to worship him. Okay, so then he's saying, well, how do we worship? How, what, is the, what is the way to worship? What is the best way to worship? Obey. Okay, okay. Best way to worship, he says, to offer your body as a living sacrifice. Well, what do I do? Paint it up with J-E-S-U-S. And we just roll out, be cheerleaders. Pa, uh, Pete's got, uh, he said he got a real nice cheerleading uniform. Really nice, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying to do. He is not calling us to, like, go out. I'm cutting my, I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to nail my hand to a tree because Jesus did it for me. You know, that, he's not calling you to do that. 
It's real simple. Take what this flesh is wanting to do that does not honor God and say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to obey the commandment and the word of God. That, my friend, that's a living sacrifice. Think about that just for a minute. You, your body loves to, loves to do what it wants to do. It, those six, the six, six senses. We got five senses. Six senses is a movie. Can anybody see ghosts? You got six senses. Anyway, <laughs> ask Bruce Willis. Anyway, so, so your five senses, I feel it. I taste it. I smell it. I see it. I want it. Right? That's what your body is saying. There's a lot of stuff that we think is right, smells right, tastes right, looks right, feels right, that is not right. And God will say, hold up, don't do that. But everything in your body is like, I want it, I want it, I want it. Okay, time to sacrifice. Body, no. God says no, let's obey, let's, let's, this is my living sacrifice. Lord, I'm here for you, I want to honor you. That, my friend, is worship. Is that making sense to y'all? That right there, when you say no to the flow, right? That, my friend, you want to talk about true worship? That right, that right there is true. That's true worship. When we're tempted to sin, and watch this. I'm going to take it a little further. And, and, and if you would tell the truth, you, you'd be with me on this. You're tempted to sin, and then you want to sin. Oh, I want that. I want to do that, Right? But then, you, then you, hear the, you hear the call of God saying, no, I don't, that's not, I don't want you in that anymore. That's, that's not my will for your life. And you say, ooh, no, really, Lord? I'm, I'm, I'm not going there. Church, that's worship. That right there is true worship. When you deny your flesh and you refuse your flesh because you want to honor God, that, my friend, is worship. That right there is worship. When, you, when you've been addicted to something for all these years and you think you need that pain pill, you, you think you need that hit, you think you need that drink, and the Lord said, no, trust me, trust me, I'm a way better high than that. And you say, okay, I'm not going back to that anymore. Lord, I'm turning to you. That's worship. Young men, when you're sitting there at the house and ain't nobody around and you got them hormones flipping around and you want to go to your phone and start looking at girls on your phone that you know that's not honoring you, your wife, or honoring the Lord, even if you're single, that's not honored. That you, 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 that you ain't going after that girl. And everything in you and your hormones is going, Whoa! I got to have it, got to gotta see it, got to look at it. I got to feed the candy for my eyes. And you say, no, I'm stopping, and I'm going to honor the Lord with my life. Church, that's worship right there. That is worship. When you're tempted at, at work, you see a way to make a little extra money, but you're cheating. Or, or you say, man, I need that screwdriver at home. I need them ink pens at home. They're not paying me enough. I'm going to take this copper from work, and I'm going go to the, the, go, go sell it at the metal shop, you know, whatever. It, what, what are you doing? The Lord said, no, 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 don't do that. That's not honoring me. L listen, when you say no to that, that's worship. Oh, yeah, that's worship. It ain't easy to do, but it's worship. And you know what that is? That's a pattern of obedience. And that right there, if you want to get close to God, a pattern of obedience is the way to get close to God. Is this making sense to anybody? Present perfect tip. Listen, his mercy, his grace, his, he's, we need to get to know that. Okay, do we have verse 3? <laughs> or are we good on that one? Okay. Verse 3, now we know this, we know him if we keep his commandments. So listen, if you're in here today and you want to begin a relationship, you want to begin knowing Jesus, start with his commands. Not that he's trying to... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. No, he's wanting you to see his heart. Okay, we good? Verse 4, he who says that, hey, I know him. I know him. I know him. What does it say? It says, if you say you know him, but you're not keeping his commandments, you're a lie. You're lying like a rug. I love saying that. And it says the truth is not in him. Did you hear that? You say you know Jesus. You proclaim to know Jesus, but you, but you, you, don't, you don't keep his commands and his word. What does it say? You're a lie. You're lying like a rug. Just like today, we could sing, oh, Jesus, you're a way maker. And you're lying like a rug. Why? Because you're... you're, you're, you're 
You ain't been in his word. How do you know he's a way maker? Have you really experienced him make a way for you? No. Why? Well, you ain't because you, you only come to church on Sunday about once or, once, once or twice a year. You know? And it's like, that ain't how you know Jesus. Now, if you, if you come to church once or twice a year and you're in your word and you, you're still having church at the house, that's another thing. But I'm talking about how can, if you don't spend the time with the Lord and you're in here singing Waymaker, how, how can you sing that with, without singing a lie because you don't really know that he's a Waymaker? Yeah, I'm getting in the kitchen a little bit, but that's all right, right? We can, we can sing. What else did we sing about Jesus today? He's a miracle worker. How do you know? How do you know? I'm telling you right now, I've been guilty of this. I've been guilty of this. I've been guilty of singing lies, and I'm talking about for me personally. Listen, we're not singing a lie that Jesus is not a way maker and a miracle worker. He's not hallelujah. We, we need, he deserves all of that. But I'm talking about in our own life. We're singing, Jesus, you're a way maker, and we're trying to look a certain way and talk a certain way, and knowing we're going to go out there in the, in the truck and get in the truck. Ah, 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 ah thunder. Oh, oh. <laughs> right? And you're like, it, it, not that that's a bad song, man. We can change the lyrics to Jesus, right? But you know what I'm saying. And, and you, you light it up, you drink it up, you go on about your business, and you forget about Jesus. But you come back next Sunday, oh, oh, glory, way maker, your miracle work. Right? See, that right there is oil and water. It does not mix. I'm talking about, I want you to, you have a relationship with Jesus. I'm not doubting that. I just want it to be real, and I want it to be close. I want you to get it close. I want you to get everything out of that relationship you possibly can. You're missing out if you go on about your own business. I'm telling you, you're missing out. I know, because I used to do that. I used to just like, man, I was some good church. I love you, Lord. Lock you up. I'll see you next week. No, that's not, he'll, he'll let you do that. But let me tell you something. We are missing out. Those that do that, you're missing out. And, hey, how do I know? Because that was me. And don't, don't get me wrong. I ain't tempted to do it uh, uh, every day. It's a battle. You battle your flesh. But true worship is in, 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 in obedience. Making sense. Okay. I don't know. I'm just telling y'all. Now, let's go. We got verse 4. Whoo. How about five? Do we got three? Do we got four? Let's go to five. <laughs> okay. Now, watch this. Now, this, listen, this literally gets deeper because you're going to go, what? You ready? Whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. Okay. Now. Now, it said command earlier, commandments, right? Now it's saying word. Okay. So, when we go back, we say that we know him. How do we know him? By keeping his commands. Isn't it what it said? Those first few verses? Okay, now it's saying that if we keep his word, truly the love of God is perfected in us. Okay, now, now he is knowing him in commandments. Now, now he's shifted from that. And now he's saying, if 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 we if we if we are we're perfected by his word and his love, we're, we're now we've kind of moved on from knowing him to being perfected in him. Are you, are you with me? Okay, that word perfected simply means mature. Okay, so you go from just knowing, right? Uh, so, I love to bass fish, right? And I like watching bass fishermen on TV. And there's this one bass fisherman that I watch, and his name's Timmy Horton, and he's a good dude. You know, I'm thinking, I watch him, he seems like a good dude, right? So, I got to searching him and looking and realized he lived in Alabama. He's got this ranch. He's got this private lake. He's got all this, and for the low, low price of $900, you can come over there and fish in his lake, right? And I'm like... Let's go. I told Shane, let's go. Let's go see him. Let's go see him, right? So I go from just knowing this guy on TV to driving up his driveway, and he's out there mowing the yard like we all do. I'm like, hey, he goes, hey, guys, I'm Timmy. I was like, we know. <laughs> I'm like, like, and you're shaking like, man, we watch you on TV. You know, like, like what I'm saying? 
So to, and for the next two days, we turkey hunted with him. We fished with him. We, I got to drive his truck. We got to drive his boat. We got to be with him. Shane caught a big old smallmouth bass. I mean, we had the great, like, by the end of the day, like when we left that last day, you know how guys do, we do the, like that. He said, man, I love you guys. Like, man, we love you too, brother. <laughs> right? So we leave. Okay, what just happened? I went from just knowing him, watching him on TV, and seeing him on TV, to literally me and Shane became friends with a dude where we could say we love each other. I mean, how crazy is that, right? So that's what I'm saying with Jesus. Jesus can go from, and I'm not saying Timmy's Jesus, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying. I'm using this example. You go from knowing, knowing, to actually an experiencing a relationship Okay, you, you mature in that relationship. I want to mature in my relationship with Jesus. That's what this, this word is saying right here. So how, do we, how are we matured? We're matured by keeping his word. Isn't it what it says? Okay, now, okay, if you're lost, what does this mean? Because, you know, you're like me, and when I was first reading it, I'm like, in commandments and his word the same thing? Well, yes, but no. <laughs> Okay, so stay with me. Commandments are something that, that is commanded to do. It's not an option, right? Think about it. Uh, we don't have to like it. We just need to do it. That's a command, right? Parents, you know this one, right? Clean your room. Well, I don't feel like cleaning my room. I don't care how you feel. You clean your room. That's a command, right? You don't care how they feel. I just want next time I come in there, I want that room what? Clean. Why? Because I said so. Amen. Anybody with me? Okay, that, that's a command, right? Now stay with me. Are you ready for this? Now when they clean their room as a pattern without you having to say anything about it, now they're keeping your word. What are they doing? They're, they've seen your heart, they've seen your will, and they want to honor you because they love you. And now they do it out of love. Yes, that, my friend, is the difference between just knowing Jesus and keeping his commands. Now we honor him and we do what his word says because we don't want to disappoint him. We love him and we want to honor his will and his word and his ways. So we do it out of what? We do it out of love. That's what keeping, that's what keeping is, keeping is, you do it out of the love of the relationship, the love for the relationship. I want to do anything I can for you because I love you. That's when you're maturing in the Lord. Make sense? So you, we progress from have to to what? Want to. Even I get to. That's what we really need to get to, <laughs> right? We, not that, that we have to or, no, we want to, but listen, we get to. Church, we, got, we get to come to church today. Amen. We get to come to church today. Yeah, we want to, but hey, we get to. We get, hey, 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 we get to get in it. We, 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 we get to get in this word. Not everybody has a copy of the word. We got three or four of them at the house, right? This is perfected. This is how his love is perfected. This is how we mature. And we need to understand something else about the word. The word is a person. Right? John 1.1. 1, 1. What's John 1.1 1, 1 say? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And you're going like, what? Me, my Bible was with God in the beginning? This Bible, man, it sure looks good for being with God back in the beginning. Well, then you know who the Word is when you go down to John 1, 14. It said the Word became flesh and did what? Dwelt among us. You see that? Yes. This is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. Okay, my next question to you then is this. Do you have a close relationship with the Word? The written Word and the person the Word. Because Jesus is the Word, right? Let me put this one on the screen. John 14, 23. He says, if any, I love this. Don't miss this. He says, if anyone loves me, if anyone loves me, do you love Jesus? He says, then you'll keep my word. Okay? But watch what else he says. He says, he says, and my father will love him or her. 
Wait, you saying your daddy's going to love the one that loves you, Jesus? Yeah, the one that loves you and keeps my word. But watch this. Then we will come, me and my daddy, Holy, me, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? All three, three in one. And then we're going to come over and visit. Is that what it says? No. What does it say? We're going to come. Ugh. Can you imagine that the creator of all wants to make a home in your heart? I can't. I, honestly, I can't get over that one. Wait, me? You sure? He says, yeah. Why? Well, you said yes to the knock. You said yes to the table. You said yes to the obedience. You said yes to the word. You said yes to the call. You said yes to my will in your life. Absolutely, we want to be right there with you. That just amazes me. That's when I wanted to say what Damon says. Let's go! The fullness of God moves into my heart? What? So here's what I would ask. If you're a believer in here today, it says the Holy Spirit lives in you. He's made home. Listen, you don't, when you make something home, you put down roots and put up a mailbox. Right? That's what he's done. So, I would ask this question. Since he's made a home in your heart, have you given him control? Or do we drag Jesus around like, or the, and the Holy Spirit and the Father around like a baby in a car seat? Bump. You know. Bump. Bump. No. No. He needs to have, he needs to have it all. Okay, or, or since he's made us his home, what, what, is, dude, what do we make him sit and watch at our house? What do, we sit, what do we sit and make him listen to? What places do we drag him into? Or have we given him control? See, the, the, the whole thing is, let me give you the reins, Lord, and I'm with you. That's the idea. What is it, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20? What does he say? He says, do you not know that your body is the temple, is the house of God? It's the, it's, it, it, it says it's a gift. That, like, the Holy Spirit is a gift that lives in us. And then he goes on to say, you do realize that you were bought with a price. And that price was very expensive. The Son of God left heaven, came to this earth, and died for us. That's the highest price ever paid for anything. I've heard some ridiculous prices for stuff. That's a ridiculous price. That the Son of God would die for me. Ridiculous price. And listen, he didn't just die for me. He died for us all. So if you're in here today and your self-esteem is so low, you need to raise it up. Because the highest price ever paid was paid for you, my friend. That makes you what? Priceless, valuable. Now walk with your head up, not because of who you are, because of whose you are. I belong to Jesus, so I can walk with my head up high. Not that you're anything. It's because he's everything. Okay, do we have verse 5? I know we're creeping through this thing, but man, I don't know about you, but I'm learning. Folks is learning, y'all. <laughs> verse 6. Can we go to verse 6? So he who says he abides... In him, all to himself also walk just as he has walked. Man, now we're really getting into the nitty-gritty. What does it mean to walk just as Jesus walked? Well, I had to go back and I had to think about my own daddy. Like when my daddy would, would, would say, hey, man, let's go, let's go hunting. And, and then my boots would be way too big because I'm probably wearing some of his boots. And we're trying to be quiet in the leaves. And I'm going... Kids just don't pick up their feet, you know. It's just, shh, shh, shh. He's over there. And I'm, shh, shh. And he's looking back. Shh. And then he'll go, pick, pick your feet up. Oh, shh. Okay. I do that for three, four. Shh, shh. Because, see, I'm not, like, involved like he is. Like, he's all, like, mode, right? And I'm just, anyway. But I learned as the years go by, as I would try to sneak up on deer, shh, 
shh, shh, and they run. I'm like, that's why my daddy was going like Elmer Fudd, right? <laughs> right? So I'm like, so what, what did I do? I started walking. So when my daddy would go, I would just walk where he walked. I walked where he walked. I mean, to this day, I still do stuff that my daddy showed me how to do. Okay? What's the difference? Jesus knocked on my door. He knocked on my door when I was miserable as can be. When I was in this and in that and I shouldn't have been in this and I shouldn't have been a part of that, he knocked on my door. I said, oh, come in, Jesus. I need you. He came in. He sat at the table and he showed me how to live. He showed me. He loved me. And then, you know what? I wanted to be like that because I didn't want to be like I was. And so when Jesus would walk, I would walk where he walked. I would walk where Jesus walked. Why was I doing that? Because I want to imitate him now. I don't want to imitate old Scotty. I want to imitate new Jesus. Is this making sense to anybody? I want to follow you, Jesus. So what does that mean? It means that I'm walking as he walked. I'm taking my steps and doing the things that he did. So what does it mean to walk like Jesus? It means to respond like Jesus would. That's a tough one. To react like Jesus would. To talk like Jesus would. That, my friend, right there, that's how we should walk. When he says walk as he walked. It says abide, didn't it? That's the most heaviest word. Amanda brought that up Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday night. And, and that word abide means to, to put down roots. Have we put down roots in Jesus yet? Have we made that, that word means to loiter. It means to make home. You ever been run off in the parking, the same parking lot several times? Why? Wow, it's just a good place to hang out. Let me tell you something. Jesus is way better than that parking lot you're getting run out of. And you won't get run out. You know what I'm saying? You won't get run off his parking lot. So abide. Listen, church, I'm going to say this again. We can't just visit Jesus. we got to abide in him. Listen, Jesus got a lot of visitors. He doesn't need any more visitors. He needs somebody. He, he needs family. That's a good note. Jesus does not need visitors. He needs family. He needs relationships. Swung through Sonic. I guess it was last year. Because my sugar is not good. So I had to go for the unsweet tea. Right? I mean, it's just nasty. <laughs> then I heard they had flavors. And so I could get an un unsweet peach tea. Right? Unsweet peach tea. So now I order a Route 44 unsweet peach tea, extra ice. Come on, somebody. And it's supposed to be good, right? I mean, it's good. And I like the taste of it. I mean, it, no, it ain't like good sweet tea, but there's enough of the peach in there that gives it just enough that you can, you can bear it. Right? So I've been thinking, like, instead of spending 4 or $5 on a Route 44, I've been, I've been thinking, I ain't even told Cody this, I've been thinking about doing it at the house. I hadn't tried it yet, but I have uh, researched it. And here's what I noticed about and I'm going to work this into Jesus, I promise, promise you. I've seen people how they do the tea. And some of you are going to notice, and I don't know this, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. right? So you watch the YouTube. Some people are dippers. They dip their bag, and then they taste it. And they dip their bag, and they taste it. Dip the bag, dip the bag, dip the bag. I was like, I don't know if I'd be a dipper. Then you got somebody that just throw the, throw the bag in there and just let the hot water and the thing do the thing. Okay. The dippers are interrupting the process. I think I would be the one that just let it on in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you talking about, Brother Scott? I, I'm going to try to make my own unsweet peach tea one day. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Because my sugar's messed up. Anyway, and that has to do with the Debbie cake rolls and all that, right? Peanut brittle, the, the candied uh, pecans that we pick up at the gas station that are warm. Anyway, <laughs> listen, 
Think of the tea bag dipping. Jesus got a lot of dippers that dip in and out. He wants the uninterrupted relationship where, like, the tea bag goes in and soak it steamy hot. It, the hot water and the tea just come, become as what? One. That, next time, when you're thinking about Jesus, think of a tea bag. And not the crazy thing that when we about that. I know where some of your head's going. But I'm talking about literally uninterrupted responsibility and relationship. Y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. Okay, here we go. Sure. <laughs> Let me try another one. Have you ever pre-sparied something? See, we power wash. Chris would know this one. We, but we have pre-spray set up on our power washers, right? Where we can spray degreaser or bleach on something and let it marinate. Okay? And once you do that, you can just go up there and rinse it off, right? Okay, why? Because it's set on there a while. Okay? Now think about it. If you didn't have the pre-spray on there, what would happen? It takes a lot of work to get it off. A relationship with Jesus. Ready? I want Jesus pre-sprayed on my life. Because the dirt, the sin, comes off so much easier. Amen? I try. Pre-spray Jesus. I bet you never heard that one. <laughs> Verse 7. Brethren, I write to you, watch this, no new commandment. But an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment in the word, which you have heard from the beginning. Okay. How is it old and how is it new? How is the, the word? Notice that in this that it says commandment. See, the S is dropped. It was saying commandments, wasn't it? Now it's saying commandment. Please don't, don't check out on me yet. He's saying if we get this one commandment right, all of them's going to fall into place. Right? Okay. I love how he walks us through this. John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give you. Here it is. That you should love one another, right? As I have loved you, love one another. If we get that one right, then all the stuff else is going to fall in there, right? Does that make sense? So how do you make an old, an old, how is a commandment old and new? And I was thinking about the sunshine and the sun. As long as I've been alive, I've seen the same sun rise and, and, and go down. How about you? So I would say the sun is old, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. It's old. But the effects of the sun is new every day. Has anybody kept a suntan, a real suntan, all year long? No. No. Well, but you got to get a fresh coat next year. Or next, right? So what I'm saying is, yeah, the sun is old, but it's still new every morning when it comes up. The same effect every day. Listen, this commandment we would say is an old commandment. We know we hear the commandment. We should love the Lord your God with all, his, all our heart, all our soul. And we should love our neighbor as ourselves. We should love as God loves, right? We read that and we say, well, that's old and a new. Yeah, it's old and a new. You, again, you may have been saved when you were young. And, and your salvation, you feel like, that. well, that's old to me. But listen, it's still new every day. Isn't it? That's how this commandment, because it still has, let me, let me tell you, let me just say it like this. Uh, next week, March 21st, not next week, week after that, March 21st, me and Cody will be married 20 years. <laughs> Flex on that. <laughs> Jesus. Only Jesus, right? And I can say, you know, somebody said, well, that's, that's, that's a long time. Wait a minute. Bobby, how long y'all been married? 65 years, baby, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, how long y'all been married? He, 45. He, Brian goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you would kind of say it's old, right? But it's new. 
every day. That's what I say. Cody, she spins my head like it's on a swivel every day. Like when I see her, I'm like, it's the first time I've seen her. I'm like, my head, whoa, what'd you say? Same thing with Jesus. Yeah, you may have got saved when you were young, but my goodness, Lord, look what you're doing today. It can't get old. Can't get old. Let's read this one off the screen. Romans 13, 8 and 10. I know I need to speed up. Listen to this. Please take this to the house with you. Owe no one anything except what? To love one another. You see it? For he who loves, watch this, fulfills the law. Isn't that good? Verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. Watch, he runs through them. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Covet. And if there's any other commandment, there are all summed up in saying, namely this, that you shall love your neighbor as what? Yourself. Love does not harm, does not do harm to a neighbor, but it's the fulfillment of the law. You see that? That is so good. So what does that mean? It means when you love, you're not going to hurt somebody. When you love, you're going to help somebody. You're not going to do all that stuff that we say that thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. When you love somebody, you're going to help. When you love someone, you're not going to hurt. Making sense. Listen, you know, so you say, well, what is love, Brother Scotty? Let the compassion of God live through you. That's it. And listen, when we get to chapter 4, we're going to go all off in on love, by the way. Okay, back to verse 8. Verse 8, this new commandment I give to you, I write to you, it's true in Him, in Jesus, in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Okay, think of the dimmer switch. Think, anybody got dimmer switches? We got them in here. Right? If Miss Tina got over there on a the wall and she started hitting that dimmer switch, you know what would happen? Like, especially if we made it all dark in here right now. We got dimmer switches on these right now. You think about it. If we started just easing that dimmer switch up, bringing the light into the house, what would happen? That light would walk that darkness right up out of this room. Isn't that beautiful? That's what the Lord does in our life. He will walk darkness right up out of our house and love is just like light and if you love in a relationship you'll grab darkness and whatever that bitterness is that you've been going through with that person or whatever it is and you just walk it right up out that relationship that's what love does because love is light and light is love verse 9 he who says he is in the light but he hates his brother is actually in darkness you see it let me say that again he who says he's in the light but hates his brother is in darkness until now. But he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Verse 11, but he who hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Church, hate Staying offended, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, all that stuff's found in the dark. Every bit of this, that, that, okay, unforgiveness just thrives in the dark. Just like mold, right? Just mold thrives in the dark. Unforgiveness and resentment and bitterness towards one another, thrives in the dark. But the moment you put light on it, what happens? It can be healed. This is why. This is why we need to be exposed to the light, guys. And God is light. I'll close with this and I'll be done. John 13, 35. I'll read it off the screen. By this, all will know that we are Jesus' disciples. Man, I'd be all in. Like, what, 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 what? Well, this is the what. If you have love for one another. I can't wait to get in chapter 4. We're going to really dive off into this. So here's what I would say. I think we need to learn how to love. 
Because if we really learn how to love, we would disperse the darkness in our life and in our relationships. Amen? If you will, bow your heads. So what do you got going on right now that you need to start turning that dimmer switch on? You need to start lighting it up. What has somebody done to you that's so bad that you won't forgive them? What has somebody done to you that you're so bitter at them, you resent them, you, 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 you've even used the word, I just hate them. You do realize that we've been forgiven so much. We've been forgiven of the worst debt ever, which is our sin debt. You do realize that debt we had of sin, it was going to cause us eternal pain and death. But Jesus wiped that away. He forgave us as soon as we turned to him. So if you're in here today and you're a believer and you, you have hate in your heart, you have unforgiveness in your heart, I would say right now, my friend, you need to start turning a dimmer switch on. Because he says, he who has been forgiven much should love much. Man, you got to release that person of that. I don't, I don't, if, even if they're not alive, you got to, you got to get it in your heart and release them because it's only hurting you. It's only Damaging the relationship between you and Jesus. I know you didn't expect them to do that. I know they did something that, that you didn't think they would ever do. But listen, we don't want anybody judging us on our worst days either. Can you let them, can you let them release them from that mess? And it's really not the person, it's the spirit behind the person. But I know you look at that person, you think, man, they're evil. Well, they're evil because they don't have a relationship with Jesus. They may say, well, they have a relationship with Jesus, but they really don't. As I say, again, we say we know him, but we don't walk in his will and his ways. We're lying. And there's a lot of folks lying out there. But the sweet thing about Jesus, he can take a liar and he can wash us and clean us and he can save us. He can make liars lovers. Jesus is called the lover of our soul. Do you let him love on you? Do you want to get closer to him? Start spending time with him. Start talking to him. But listen, a lot of communication is listening. And listen to what he says. Quit being so hard on yourself and start seeing yourself through God's eyes. Because we learned today that, hey, <laughs> highest price ever paid was paid for us. And let me tell you something. If you're in here today and you don't, you've never come to Jesus and maybe you're hearing him knock on your door today, I'm going to tell you and I believe 
most of the people in here would stand up and say, please don't ignore that knock. It's the greatest knock on a door you'll ever answer because it's actually someone who cares about you. It's the Lord. The lover of your soul. The one that created you, by the way. He breathed breath into your lungs. You're not a mistake. I know we use that word a lot. You're not a mistake. He said he, he knew you before you were in your mother's womb. You're a dream come true, my friend. Father, I thank you for this day, this day that you've handmade. I thank you for these folks in here today that you have handmade. Lord, only you know the hearts that are in this room today. You know those that are holding resentment and bitterness and hate and anger and unforgiveness. Lord, I pray right now that you would soften their heart because I know that's your will. Lord, there, there may be those today in here that, that they say they've known you for a long time, but the relationship's not good. God, I pray right now that you'd prick their heart and they'd come running and get close to you again. They'd scoot over that truck seat next to you, Lord. Lord, that person in here that's hearing you knock today, God, I pray they wouldn't ignore it. That person today that feels like they're less than, they're not valuable at all. Lord, I pray they begin to see who they are through your eyes. Lord, those in here that are needing a miracle, those that are in here that's needing healing, whether it's emotional or physical, God, I pray you'd begin to do work. I pray, I pray you'd send people to, to, to just love on them and be your hands and feet in their life. But Lord, thank you for how you love us. I thank you for your word. Thank you for what you taught us today. Let's begin to weed out the mess that we shouldn't be a part of. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. The church said, Amen. If you would stand.